Now to our special series on transport problems in the southeast. The region's population is set to swell to more than 5 million by 2040. That's putting even more pressure on the road and rail network as residents flock to outer Brisbane suburbs chasing the Australian dream. But as daily commuting times continue to rise, experts say families are choosing to give up the house and land package. Alicia Forsyth's worked hard for her patch of Australia. She chose Ripley, south of Ipswich, where her four-year-old daughter Harper enjoys the benefits of a yard. Do you hold the hose? It's a 480 square metre block, four bedroom, two car garage. Yeah, so we, we've really enjoyed living here. Ripley is Queensland's fastest growing satellite city. Within 15 years, 120,000 people are expected to live here. The main developer plans to pour $1.5 billion into a town centre. To support those population growth and providing health services, educational services, all the government services that need to be in here. But for the moment, Brisbane's Western Corridor is facing a commuting crisis. The existing transport network for the Ipswich region just can't keep pace. When you look at the growth we're going to have from 200,000 to half a million people in 30 years. We can't travel the same way. One incident can turn the Western Freeway into a car park. And I drive to Acacia Ridge and it takes about 40 minutes on a good day. If there's heavy traffic, it will take a lot longer. Ipswich is addicted to cars. 54% uh, of families in Ipswich have two or more cars. But perhaps that's not surprising. Many people choose the highways because of poor public transport options. Ripley is serviced by one bus that operates just five days a week. There are two rail lines, one into Ipswich and one that stops at Springfield. There are plans to improve that. An extension of the line is proposed to loop in Ripley. It just won't happen until after Cross River Rail. It's already gridlock at Springfield Central train station with a sea of illegal parking in the master planned community. This city will grind to a halt if we don't have an appropriate and effective public transport system. It's a similar story for other growth pockets across the southeast. These are areas that have 5,000 people. Now they're going to have hundreds of thousands of people and how are we going to move them around? But some families are turning their backs on suburbia to be closer to work, schools, shops and public transport. We are noticing more and more people choosing to sacrifice space um, for accessibility. So more and more families with children are actually staying in apartments. The latest census data shows 2.3 million Australians live in an apartment. Families with children make up about a quarter of those and nearly one in ten of all children aged four and below have an apartment home. Travis Pearson and his wife decided to sell their Clayfield home for an apartment in West End. We grew up both believing that you had to buy your house and your land and live out in the suburbs to be happy and that's what you should be aspiring to. He says the family is thriving. His daughter walks to school and both parents take public transport to work. We've got everything we need around us with the shops, the community. We've got close access to hospitals as we get older. But with an extra one and a half million people expected to call the southeast home within 20 years, the choices about where to live and how to get there are likely to get more difficult. Rachel Riga, ABC News, Ipswich.